Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and in this video I was originally going to start the video with the rocket already running and us on the way to the moon but I wanted to address a comment that uh, was made on the previous video in episode 1 and that was that there were no clouds. Uh, there are clouds. It's just a really clear day in Florida and uh, you can see the clouds in the background there and uh, clouds uh, here obviously on the globe there's no clouds on the starting screen but otherwise there's definitely clouds um, as far as uh, the rockets tanks are concerned that was another comment uh, it seemed OP it, it does seem a little bit uh, but that's mainly because it's designed for its purpose and the boosters for instance are actually heavier uh, than an equivalent cryogenic tank with procedural parts so and the core is a little bit lighter maybe than it ought to be because I don't know how well I estimated the interstage I could stand to add about a half ton more to that anyway uh, we will make our way to the moon today we are going to test in situ resource utilization and to do that we should line up with the moon properly I wanted to show this in daylight so that we could see the clouds I think uh, part of the reason people thought there might not have been is because well it was really dark and that's because I want to line up with the moon for our transfer so we can't really see clouds here all we want to do is drill for water on the moon and convert it to hydrogen and oxygen I'm not a big proponent of testing things for Mars around the moon Mars is very different Mars has double the gravity it gets half the solar radiation and of course half the solar input as the moon does and, um, you know, you have all sorts of complicating things like Mars's tenuous atmosphere, which does provide a little bit more radiation protection and can slow you down on descent. And a lot of the things that we would want to test, we can test in low Earth orbit just fine. For instance, our systems. I don't want to get into uh, that in any detail, but it's a long discussion. But there is one thing you can test on the surface of the moon. And that's the ability to drill for water and convert it to hydrogen and oxygen and store it. So that's what we're going to do. And that will be useful for Mars as well because we still have to do those steps. The next step after that, if we're using methane, is to take the hydrogen, combine it with the CO2 in the atmosphere to make the methane. We can't do that on the moon, but we can do everything else. Now. The reason why I have to test this is because I actually have four systems with which I could do this. I have my own system, which was a light modification on the stock uh, drilling and ISRU system. So in stock you get ore, right? And it converts to liquid fuel, oxidizer, and uh, mop propellant, and I forget if xenon or whatever is a possibility, but you convert it to those fuels. So what I did was I took the stock system, uh, adjusted its masses so it uh, matched the masses stated in various other documents for similar systems. And then I made it convert the ore into liquid methane, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, and water uh, in different modes. Assuming that the ore was a particular kind of hydrated I think it was hematite or I forget what kind of rock that's prevalent on Mars that has water trapped in it. Now extracting water from a rock like that is a very energy intensive process. So my method is very simple but it takes a lot of energy, lots of electric charge, like 40 kilowatts and it doesn't produce very quickly. It's meant to uh, fill up a, a small stage in like many months you know six to ten maybe even 16 months for a really big lander so there's plenty of room for more efficiency now that's not what we're carrying here then another version is the version in USI USI allows you to drill for water directly instead of drilling, drilling for ore it also has all sorts of other resources you can scan for and drill and but USI by default converts that stuff into you know liquid fuel and oxidizer still I forget if I've added a configuration to allow it to convert to liquid methane liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen though I can 
that's easy enough if I haven't done it already, and I plan to. So there's the USI system. There is also the KSP Interstellar system. And KSP Interstellar knows about real fuels. So it already you, you don't have to mess with it to get it to do liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Um, and it's actually the KSP Interstellar system that we're carrying right now. And KSP Interstellar though has this weird liquid water thing going. And I don't know what liquid whether liquid water is gonna be acting the same as water. I'm used to seeing water, and USI uses just plain water. But KSP Interstellar identifies this additional resource called liquid water. Now, is liquid water going to be compatible with water? Is it gonna be the same thing? I don't know exactly. So, we're gonna find out. So, we're gonna have the KSP Interstellar system drill for, well, the drill is actually not from KSP Interstellar. This is a little bit complicated. Our drill is, I believe, uh, from MKS, so this is the USI drill, because the USI drill can drill for water, but it's not the liquid water water, it's the water water. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's just gotta be this way. So we'll see if it, we get water out of it, and whether this electrolyzer that we're carrying can convert it to hydrogen and oxygen. If it can convert to hydrogen and oxygen, we still need another step, this liquefaction array, and this is actually from the real ISRU system to liquefy it into liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. This is actually really heavy, which is why the scanner, which we still need to scan for the resources, uh, and the drill and two solar panels are both on this, are all on this side to counterbalance this liquefaction array. So, that's the setup, and of course we will need extra power, which is why we're carrying a fuel cell array here, and the fuel cell array should be able to run off of the hydrogen and oxygen if we can produce it. Now, we're already producing a little bit of hydrogen here because of boil-off. As the liquid hydrogen boils off, it'll produce hydrogen and put it in that tank. I don't know if this tank is an appropriate size or not. I'll have to double-check that. Let's see. Uh, but See, 500,000 units of hydrogen doesn't actually translate into 500,000 units of liquid hydrogen. Um, I forget what the ratio is, but I think it's something like 200 to 1. So that's not... oh. Hold on. I gotta check out my script as far as how it deals with this engine. There we go. It seems to be double doing the toggling of it. Did it do uh, yeah, double. Uh, it's supposed to enable crossfeed here too, and it, uh, it seems to have done it twice. So we'll have to see about that. Okay. Maybe I need to put everything in one stage. Instead of having the separation of the core stage and ignition as separate stages, I should probably all lump it together, and that'll save that problem. Okay, as you can see, we're not using my lander stage. We're using a Blue Origin Blue Moon. And that's because it runs off of, uh-oh, it's actually being depleted as we speak. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It runs off of hydrogen and oxygen and therefore can be fully fueled. I don't have an additional decoupler in the way, so it's just drawing directly. Anyway, uh, it can be fully fueled by the drilling unit instead of uh, methane oxygen lander like mine which can, you know, obviously will not be able to replenish its methane and oxygen, uh, methane, they can replenish its oxygen. Okay, so, well, we're not reading delta V, obviously, because they locked the fuel. All right, we are in orbit. This is much lighter than the payload that we sent in the last video, and 12.5 uh, tons with the fuel locked, obviously. Okay, I probably want to go into a polar orbit, to be honest. We'll fix that. Well, this is at least inclined. I'll fix that on a mid-course adjustment, though. I did put MLI, what, full MLI layers on this, so 100 MLI layers. Which has the best um, insulation we can have. And I picked the version. There are two versions of this that I made. One with uh, hyd hydrogen gas thrusters and uh, this one with uh, Hyd Hydrolox RCS. The Hydrolox one is simpler. The hydrogen gas has a converter that uh, 
heats up the liquid hydrogen and creates hydrogen gas for the thrusters and also has much less ISP on the RCS. So this is this is the nicer one. Obviously hydrogen gas thrusters would be easier to uh, create. So I said it was the KSP interstellar system because of uh, because of the converter, the thing that actually takes the resources and converts it to what we want. But truth be told, we're using a mix. We've got a USI drill, uh, KSB interstellar converter, and then the liquefaction thing from real ISRU. So who knows? My luck, I'll do something wrong and we won't even get to test it. I gave Blue Moon a antenna built in that could reach, you know, the moon. Well, reach Earth from the moon. Seemed logical. I don't know what kind of orbit I need to get in for this. I don't have ScanSat, so it's just a basic orbital survey thing. No, oh, heck of a quick burn. Okay. Um. That does it. We don't need to fiddle around with that. Perfect, really. We probably want it a little bit higher than that, though. We'll figure that out once we get there. Uh, okay. The RCS doesn't seem in a hurry to get us there, so ignition. Now, well, 87 degrees. A little bit high on the periapsis, but what do you expect? Um, we can bring it down. Nope, stop, just stop. Well, we can get into orbit pretty instantaneously. Mm, there we go. Alright, that's as low as that periapsis can go. Let's perform this orbital survey. Uh, okay, this looks like it's gonna take forever. Uh oh. Uh, it really is looking like it's gonna take forever. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess that's sort of appropriate. We're, we're gonna figure out something about boil off in the long term at this rate. No, is it really? Is it continue? Okay, it is continuing. It just didn't want to show me. How long is it gonna take about? That looks like it's gonna take years. Okay, well, we reached 1%, and it seems to go best when I'm at this particular level. If I try and go any faster, it doesn't seem to go very fast at all. Uh, it sort of disappears. You know, at this rate, it should be 10 times the rate before, right? So by now, it should have advanced to uh, probably 0.1%. Mm, not quite, so it doesn't seem to be going 10 times faster at that rate. And at the fastest rate that I can go, which is there, that's 100 times what it was before. Nope, definitely not. So I'm just gonna, hmm. I guess I'll just have to leave it here until it's done. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the um, communications. The antenna seems to be configured in a way that's similar to other stock antennae. Maybe I should increase the packet interval, but that's, you know, there's no particular reason for this to be this slow. I don't know if Kerbalism is changing it or something else is changing it. But, well, I'm sort of stuck here, aren't I? Uh, no, I don't think I can wait through this. I'll have to find some sort of configuration solution. Or I could dump in ScanSat. Let's try the packet interval thing first. And then I'll toss in ScanSat and see if that... Maybe ScanSat is ultimately going to be the thing. We'll see.
Okay, well, I decided to throw in ScanSat, though it keeps trying to do the other scan up there. And whenever I start the scan with ScanSat, it uh, gives me a warning that there's no storage left on vessel, scanner halted. Uh, I don't know what that means, there's no data here. I don't know what kind of storage I'm supposed to have. Scanner enabled. It's definitely Kerbalism doing it. And I have a sneaking suspicion Kerbalism is making the uploading of that data really slow too. Another uh, question mark is it seems like ScanSat doesn't have a water option here under resources. It has hydrates, but not water, even though in the resources folder in ScanSat as scan resource. It has a water option there, but it doesn't have a water option here in the map. So that's peculiar too. This whole scanning for resources thing is not particularly clear at this point. Maybe I should just try and land the lander on the South Pole and see if the South Pole has water. <laughs> I mean. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of right now. You guys are probably going to have to give me a suggestion of what to do in this situation with the scanner. Now, I did turn off, uh, just in case you're wondering. There is an option here that says require narrowband scanner. That's off. This appears to be the South Pole. I don't know if they have water in the right place or not, but okay, we're, we're going around this way. We're pretty high, so it'll be a sort of straight down deal. I'll send another scanner later. Oh, well, should, we should just send a dedicated scanner satellite. Well, see, now we have learned that this setup is not adequate for some reason. Better to find that out here than uh, find that out launching this to Mars. And we killed some, a little, well, 18 days. We've still got 435 days until the first Mars window. And I'll send as much as I can during that window. Hopefully the systems that we send will be good. Well, that's pretty good. And it looks like pass on over this patch. Hopefully this patch is a patch with water. But again, we don't know. Oh, oh, this doesn't have a decoupler. No, it's just, there we go. Why didn't you decouple? Everything has to be complicated. Oh, I gave it 10 ignitions. Let's see if, okay. I just wanted to make sure with the fuel locked, it didn't cause problems for that. Uh, this is just an animation for lower gear. It doesn't have the full gear effect going. I mean, it looks moist over here, doesn't it? It looks pretty bumpy, too. There's the south pole, you can tell because of the textures. <laughs> well, oh, we don't have downward facing thrusters? We do, surely. I wonder why it's not using them. Okay, well, we'll. Uh, oh, I don't have control anymore. Gosh darn it. Well, I messed up. Yes, we are blocked. Hmm. Are we going to have to do the whole thing with the moon? I think we are. We're going to have to do the whole thing where I set up satellites around the moon for communications. And uh, we'll see about the rest of the scanning business. Well, this is going to be a bust. All right, back to Space Center. Okay, well, I've been trying to make my little satellites, but I've been beset by many frustrations. First of all, note this uh, one kilonewton thruster and its bottom node, which is way down there for reasons I can't fathom. Uh, here's a stack separator. That's uh, a minor thing, but I was sort of hoping to use SSTU tanks to build this. I mean, this is a quickie. I'm not going to make my own model of a scan set uh, in Blender, but maybe I should because these nice, very nice tanks, 
yield a negative mass. <laughs> um, they used to work, these SSTU tanks. They used to work just fine. But now they don't. Here it says mass drive 4.9 kilograms. And then when you load it up, 9 kilograms and 318. And cryogenic is completely different on that. And maybe if it's a no, it's still negative. How how it gets to be negative, I have no idea. But it's sure not the only thing that does that. But take a look at this. This is an SSTU. Uh, you might think it's a stock one because it's the same model. I don't know why it's the same model, but this is a weird tank because it says 2.8 tons there. This one says 1.2 tons, which it is not. Uh, 2.8 tons there. But what does it do when we connect it to anything? Negative 10 tons. Well, I mean, negative whatever times 4. Lies about it here, though. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what has happened to my SSTU tanks. Are they all like this? Yeah. SSTU tanks somehow have negative mass. So, uh, SSTU is a very complicated mod, and, but it's a very nice mod and I would like to use it. I don't know what has happened. I guess I'll have to find out some other time. I mean, among other things, of course, that uh, we have hampering us, but I need to add a few commsats to this. And I'm not 100% clear how the communications are working with this new version of Kerbalism. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, these commutatrons, these little guys, are promising... No. I need relay sats though for the actual relay sats. Uh, they promise a powerful omnidirection antenna, uh, omnidirectional antenna, fully adequate for early lunar probes. So okay, uh, but we'll have more formidable satellites down below. Let me get this together, put it on a Sagita rocket, and probably not a Sagita heavy, and then we'll send it on over there. Okay, so here we go with this. Lunar Comsat plus Resource Scanner launch. Just a single stick Sagita this time. Lots of rolling going on. Uh, let me just SAS that. Uh, I look forward to the time of year when we actually get to launch in daylight. It's probably still many months away though. That's just throttling down to limit uh, stress on the vehicle. Dynamic pressure. If it reads that there's too much dynamic pressure, it'll throttle down. Okay, let's see if the second stage activates properly. Oh, uh, nozzle didn't. Oh, wait, it's going. And it's the right specific impulse. Okay. And we've got crossfeed here. That's good. If we don't have crossfeed on this one, the RCS thrusters won't work. And fairing separation, and there's a little stack. Four satellites all together. Uh, the scanner one, and then three that are purely calm. And since I don't have remote tech, I don't have to tune them or anything. They're just a stock calm sort of situation. Modified by Kerbalism, of course. Oh, incidentally, I don't think there's any way that the Delta V reading down here is correct. Uh, our staging is all over the place. We're staging off the top bit first, and yeah. We'll have to be careful. Okay, we are in orbit. Hopefully this stage can get us over to the moon without any fuss. And we want a polarish sort of situation there. Okay, fortunately we have communication where we want to start to burn. And with the fuel settled, I'm just going to ignite it. Hopefully that's polar. We will find out. Um, it seems like we need to flip around because all the solar panels are blocked. Okay, that's right there. And on to the moon again. Boy, we have like a 
tiny tiny little bit left in this tank but apparently it's a very important tiny bit as it always is the last little bit does count and right now we're only six tons so and a large chunk of that mass is this engine <laughs> so uh, the payload is what what is the payload i don't know if you'll see it right i don't know which part is the payload yeah the staging is too weird we'll see when we decouple things these solar panels aren't the most turnable sort of things apparently I mean, they're supposed to turn, but they're not doing much of that. I think sun tracking might be broken on these, but I don't know. Can't imagine. Hmm, thinking about how exactly we're going to get things into different orbits. Maybe I should toss some stuff off right now. I don't know. It seems helpful to have this use its remaining fuel to do stuff. I don't actually know how much delta V each of these probes has. In theory, it should be enough. Now, are we going to have communication at periapsis? It'll be a little bit close. I don't know if there's going to be a horizon problem. Possibly. So we might want to again to orbit a little bit ahead of periapsis. Oh, oh, that's it. Okay, so the delta V was reading down there was, was wrong. Okay, let's see what the mass of this was. Uh, 5.841 right now so that was 3.5 tons on its own and yeah I forget what the full mass of that is probably altogether about 50 ish tons and then this bunch is 2.309 it is in orbit right now so let's deal with these separately. That appears to be the top probe. Ooh. Signal lost. Oh, signal is back. Okay, um, could you get yourself off of there? Come on. Okay, there's something with that one kill Newton thruster. Probably time warping would do the trick, but... Mm, Push off. Okay, good. We'll deal with the rest later. Well, it's suboptimal, but we'll, we'll fix that. It has the fuel to do it. But does it have that, like, space? Is it gonna say, run out of space, we can't continue the scan? Hmm. Yeah, it did. No storage left on vessel. I guess I must need some other part or something. Those familiar with Kerbalism might be able to tell me. That should be good enough for now. Okay, well, that's, they're all very distant for now. 18 hours. Anyway, we're gonna separate them off one at a time. No, there should be signal. Come on. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Why is it not why is it not staging this? Oh, this is not properly configured. Well, RCS it is then. Okay, actually, you know what? Maybe six hour orbits is not a bad thing. Lopsided right now, but with a two hour stagger, a six hour orbit is good. Okay, so I've taken care of placing the satellites more or less off camera, and uh, they're like this right now. Not exactly a triangular placement, but a decent placement nonetheless. I just wanted to get it over with. But yeah, well, this is getting its electric charge, but it's not doing what I want it to do. We don't have the stock option here, and when I click Start Scan, it does start scanning. It does give data to the ScanSat stuff. And so if we take a look at ore, we're getting a little bit of extra data here now. I, I think 
Oh, it already took me out of it. I didn't even notice. It took me out of scanning already. Oh, there we go. It says there's no storage left on vessel. Okay, well, let's stop by the VAB and see if there's something to add storage to the vessel. Well, there sure doesn't seem to be much in the Kerbalism section. There is this active shield thing, which I didn't notice before. Active shield disabled, active shield active. Active shielding of 0 0.004 rads per hour. What is it? Some sort of magnetic shield? I don't know much about it. It's, it seems... It uses power to create a magnetic field. That's a little bit overly fancy. But okay, uh, chemical plant, external ECLSS, and then external fuel cell is all we've got. It's got Apollo and shuttle alkaline fuel cells, supposedly. But... What we don't have is anything that says anything about storage. So, oh, well, that's a huge promise. All in one IRSU refinery. Uh, well, we'll have to think about that. Okay, I'm all out of guesses as far as how we're actually going to scan for resources. So, first step of ISRU scanning for resources. I don't know if we can do it unless I leave my computer on for days allowing that satellite to do it the stock way. I don't know why it's taking so long. I'll look at the configurations to see what's going wrong there and we're going to have to figure something out. But as disappointed as I am, I have to leave it there. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.